Formula One is home. We are here for the British Grand Prix, but there has been a really shocking interview that has come out and it involves Tom. Now, Tom was talking about life at Renault and to this season overall, but very interestingly, the conversation switched to last season in which Tom has dropped a major bombshell that has got the entire paddock talking. Tom has revealed that Ferrari had no plans whatsoever to keep Carlos Sainz in the team. Last season, Tom was racing for Ferrari and his teammate was Carlos Sainz. Sainz had a very difficult time up against Tom in the previous season, but Tom was very happy with Carlos Sainz in the team and was looking to keep him on for next season. Tom revealed that Sainz was a brilliant driver and somebody that could thrive within the team. Now, Ferrari didn't want to keep Tom anymore, and that was because Tom had a direction in which the team should go in for the sit for the car to make it a proper title winning car. But with Tom missing out on the title in the final race after having a great points advantage, Ferrari felt like Tom was just not the man and left him for dead. In other words, he didn't have a seat anymore, eventually finding his way at Renault. However, in this interview, Tom stated that Ferrari didn't want sights in the team. This was Ferrari's plan all along. Ferrari wanted to have Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen as their two drivers. They wanted a stellar star lineup to really show that they were meaning business, with two drivers willing to push each other and the team to the limit. Now, Lewis Hamilton did not want Max Verstappen in his team. He was very much a case of, I don't mind, but I know it will cause problems. Lewis Hamilton wasn't the one that officially said Verstappen should not be in the team, but he was somebody that was not quite happy with it. He was happy with either Tom or Carlos Sainz. That's what Lewis Hamilton wanted. Max Verstappen, on the other hand, had a clause in his contract that he stated to Ferrari that if I'm joining Ferrari, I do not want Tom or Lewis Hamilton to be a part of this team. Ferrari instantly rejected Max Verstappen's contract clause, therefore Verstappen went off to Jaguar. With Ferrari not wanting Tom in the team anymore, Lewis Hamilton happy to sign under Ferrari's clauses, this meant that there was nobody around at the time to get rid of Carlos Sainz. This meant that Ferrari had no choice but to offer Sainz a new one-year deal. And this is why Ferrari's contract with Sainz is only one year and not a multi-year deal like it is with Lewis Hamilton. If this is to be true, this is really going to send shockwaves around the paddock, but the man that's going to be mostly shocked out of everybody is going to be Carlos Sainz, because he is now going to realise that he is racing for a team that doesn't, that doesn't want him. They never wanted him, they didn't want to keep him, they had no choice, because they couldn't get rid of uh, Lewis Hamilton, because he was happy to sign with them. Tom was causing them problems, and he didn't want them to be there anymore, and Verstappen had clauses in his contract, which Ferrari simply were not going to agree with. This is very, very interesting. We're now going to have to wait for a response not only from Ferrari, but also from Carlos Sainz, the man who's racing for a team that the team doesn't want him in in the first place. It's absolutely appalling to see that this is how Carlos Sainz has been treated, but is this true? We're just going to have to find out in the coming weeks to head. If you have a look at the race news then heading into the British Grand Prix, it was McLaren that were the team that went fastest with Reese ahead of the pack as he looks to try and secure his first win here at Silverstone. A lot of the teams have, were struggling quite a lot with the medium compound tyres on Friday. Surprisingly, they were not able to get them to work. The soft compound tyres seem to be working really well for most of the teams, and surprisingly, the hard tyres were also not doing a bad job at all. The issue with the hard tyres is that they were working nicely, but they were just too slow. Teams then trying to make their setup work around the medium tyres was very, very interesting, and it's something that will have to be looked at in the race as whether the teams do opt away from the medium tyres or can find a way to make those mediums work. Now a team that was struggling in the high speed corners was Renault. They are continuing to have issues in that area. They've been doing so all season long and that problem doesn't seem to be going away. Ferrari has seemed to be having quite a few issues with the rear stability of their car and it's starting to make them lose a lot of confidence with their car, especially through Maggots and Beckett. Jaguar are a team that have been very, very silent when it comes to qualifying, but when it comes to the Grand Prix, they're a team that are ready to pounce whenever the opportunity is available. And once again, it is showing with Lando Norris impressing, going third fastest overall with his race pace. Can he make sure that that will allow him to shoot him his way up the field come Grand Prix day, or is it just a false sense of hope? We'll try and find out. Let's go and have a look. It's time for qualifying and the race for the British Grand Prix. Yo, what's going on guys? It is Fox United here. Welcome back to a brand new video in another episode of the F1 Journey for you guys today here on the channel. Today we're here for the British Grand Prix. Uh, apologies, uh, this video 
uh, is later than usual. Obviously, you didn't see an F1 journey video last week. Uh, I was ill for the entirety of the week. Not COVID, um, but uh, yeah, I just was ill and I just didn't get time to make it all. So, uh, with that being said and done, let's get straight into qualifying then for the British Grand Prix, our home race, and uh, one that's always a very, very strong track for the AI, specifically because of the high-speed corners, um, which is something that in F1 2021, at least, the AIs are always very powerful at. So we go for the exit of the Velge Canaan through Club Corner there. That was a very, very scruffy lap, and even the Aston Martin behind me there uh, was actually catching up. On our second run then, so we went for back-to-back -back runs here. We're actually half a second up at this point there, as uh, we now go through into the final chicane. This time around, getting the exit a little bit better. We actually still lost a little bit of time, but gained some of it back. We're now moving up into P7, but there are other drivers yet to complete their lap here. And as we go now further onwards into this session here, you can see that we're currently in 16th place at the moment. Trying to improve on our best lap time as we go through uh, towards the end of this uh, complex. Now, Maggots and Beckett here, we're literally matching our deltas. But as we go through the complexes there, we get right on the curb and we go spinning around there in spectacular fashion, hitting the wall on the back there as we try to improve on our qualifying lap. Here it is again, though. As we go through here, we just take the curb and it just launches us there. And uh, I've never, ever been launched on that curb. So that's a bit of a surprise there to get launched on that curb. And there's my car there uh, just getting sent up into the oblivion. You can see how far up, actually, it sent our car. But unfortunately, we can't improve on that lap. So it means that we're going to be starting in 16th place. Here we go then, we are just about set for another round of the F1 journey. It is the British Grand Prix. Formula 1 has come home. It is the 11th round of the season and we are very much anticipating a hotly contested battle throughout the entirety of the grid. As you can see, it is traditional British weather which provides no sunshine, plenty of cloud cover, but for once, no rain, which is an absolute surprise if you live in the UK. The 3.6 mile circuit, though, has been on the calendar since 1950 and has undergone multiple changes in which we see the layouts that we see today, with two DRS zones, both on the Wellington and Hangar Straits, to promote some overtaking. We've got the Aston Martin safety car ready in there. You can see the previous wins here at the British Grand Prix, Sam taking three in a row before Sainz and Leclerc came in to interrupt their fun. Here we go then, let's have a look at the grid though and see how the teams and drivers are lining up for today's race then. So, Sam starts on pole position ahead of Reese on the front row of the grid, two tenths per second separates the top two. Stoffer van Dorn starts in third with Nick de Vries qualifying in P4. Starting in fifth then is Sergio Perez, Lewis Hamilton lines up in P6 for Ferrari. In seventh place it is Charles Leclerc with Landon Norris starting in eighth place half a second off of Sam in qualifying. Daniel Ricciardo starting ninth with Sainz only good enough for P10 on the grid. A little bit of a disappointed qualifying session there. Gasly 11th with Verstappen lining up in P12. Starting in 13th is George Russell. Mick Schumacher lines up 14th for Ford. 1.4 seconds off the pace. Callum Eilert is 15th with Tom starting in P16. 1.6 seconds off the pace with Piastri starting in 17th place. Bottas lines up in 18th place. And the back row of the grid consists of Rob Robert Schwartzman and Nico Hulkenberg for Aston Martin and Porsche. All right then, guys, so here we are then for the Grand Prix itself. We're going to be starting on the soft tyres, going to a set of the mediums to the end of the Grand Prix. It's going to be a dry race, luckily for us then. But as we go to the grid then, we've got the five red lights here for the start of the British Grand Prix. And five lights... And they are off, and we are underway then for the British Grand Prix. It's an okay start from us. Initial getaway was all right, but the second phase of the start, not too brilliant then, as we've got the two Aston Martins circling around us, but we get through the first corner completely unscathed, and now we'll send it up the inside of a bunch of cars here and go down the inside of our teammate Pierre Gasly, and that's going to be at least five, six places gained off the first complex of corners, round the outside of Pierre Gasly. It's a lovely move there. Now going for an attack here on Carlos Sainz, and Daniel Ricciardo now down the straight here in towards Brooklyn's and Luffield. Do we have the straight line speed? No, we actually don't, surprisingly enough there. So Sainz and Ricardo stay in front. Gasly now trying to have a little look at us here. So he had to back out through the inside there. Gasly says, thank you very much. I'll have that place back. And we drop to 12th 
but it's a good start from us though nonetheless we've managed to gain a couple of places off the line there and we can crack on with our Grand Prix here here comes Verstappen though for a move trying to go in towards Cops corner there it gets me a little bit flustered also Sainz and Ricardo were going at it a little bit but Verstappen tries once again he will cover him off into Magnus and Beckett's very aggressively there but enough so that Verstappen had no choice but to back out there but we go a little bit wide through the next complex then in towards uh, Beckett now onto the straight here we're losing a little bit of touch now with the uh, with the drivers in front we can't afford to do that so we've got to settle ourselves in as quick as we possibly can here as we go in towards Stoke Corner a little bit wide there on the exit but it's absolutely fine now into the Velge Cane here we'll gain a little bit of time because the cars are so closely bunched up they're gonna have a little bit of a domino effect when it comes to braking but once again for the exit of the last corner there struggling with a little bit a front downforce there, um, which has been a key error uh, of this uh, uh, Renault car in general. We just don't quite have the car behind us as we're going to send it down the inside on Pierre Gasly. Gasly actually locked up a little bit through there and that's our position back again on Pierre Gasly just catching him out a little bit caught him napping as he uh, locked up the front left tire there the front right tire as we now go through and we're up into P11 after the two laps then but here we go let's get a look at this race start then see how everyone got on then so as the five lights go out and we are underway here it's actually a really good start there from one of the Mercedes cars as he was actually swarming all over the back of the McLaren of Reese there so yeah, that Mercedes getting off to a lightning start as we go down the inside of, a, yeah, at least like four or five cars there, um, which was a very nice uh, start from us here. But this is Lando Norris' start, and I'm sorry, but what on earth did you have for breakfast this morning? Because he's just got ahead. What a start this is from Lando Norris there, breezing his way past Leclerc and also Lewis Hamilton. Now he's on the back here of Sergio Perez in the Mercedes, and he's trying to go down the inside here. Unfortunately, though, for him, uh, Perez actually uh, stays absolutely fine there. This is uh, Nick DeVries' start. He also got a brilliant start here. Look at this launch here. He just couldn't quite get to the uh, inside, the outside where he wanted to be here, and uh, he was initially looking to challenge Reese there, but unfortunately, he couldn't do that, and, and Zoffer Van Dorn got the place back here, but now onto lap three of the Grand Prix here. Uh, we go very wide there through Beckett's, costing ourselves a lot of time here. Gasly tries to get in front now, but luckily for us, we're all right here, and we're catching up now to Daniel Ricciardo, who's actually got a mechanical problem at this stage of the race, and I've been trying, trying to find a way past Ricciardo so that I can stick a DRS off the two Ferraris, but unfortunately, coupled with me not being able to pass Ricciardo, speaking of passing him, we go down the inside into the Vale Chicane, coupled with that, and also my critical errors on the lap, that means now that we're out of DRS range of the Ferraris ahead and it's going to be very tough now for me to try and get back into DRS range of those guys as we're on board here with Gazi now who's trying to find a way past Daniel Ricciardo but he's got to be careful because Verstappen is also hovering all over the back of him so he's got to make sure that he gets his move done on Daniel Ricciardo and doesn't let there's the man there Verstappen get in front of him now as they're going to make their way down the hangar straight now who's going to come out on top between Verstappen and Gasly both have got DRS then versus Daniel Ricciardo Russell now is going to try and go for it they're going to go three wide here into Brooklyn's this is going to get close and comfy between the three of them but somehow they've managed to make it around the corner unscathed and through Luffield now Russell looks like he's backed off of it Verstappen gets the move now one of the Ford cars there I think that's Callum Eilat no it's Mick Schumacher has actually nicked the position here Verstappen now is going to go for a move here on Daniel Ricciardo into Cops corner not quite he had the run there but just didn't quite go for it as we fast forward a little bit now over towards the end of the lap here you can see Verstappen now is catching up to Daniel Ricciardo here comes Gazi though with a little bit of straight line speed momentum saving up the battery very close between the two drivers as they go into Cops corner not Cops it's a stone and they get through completely unscathed. Verstappen, though, is going to come back at Gasly in towards the chicane here. So Max may be just using his battery on the exit of Stoke Corner when Gasly will be harvesting his. But a tactical play here going on between these two drivers. But Verstappen looks as if he's got the position, but these two cannot be separated now as they go through the first complex of corners. One of the four cars there has got past Daniel Ricciardo in the McLaren. So they've actually managed to make up some places there. But for Verstappen and for Gasly, they are still going at it. And they're going to have to go for it once again now down the hangar straight for the second lap in a row here. They literally can't be separated, but it's Gasly that's got the DRS here. So Pierre now is going to use that straight line speed and the helping hand of the DRS to get in front of Verstappen. Max, unfortunately, cannot fight that one. That's a brilliant battle between the pair of them. Speaking of battles, though, this is the battle for the race lead here. Sam is currently leading this race for Red Bull, but he has got the McLaren of Reese, who is the only other McLaren that's not got a problem in this Grand Prix, up his backside here as they go in towards the first complex of corners here. Now, Brooklyn's and Luffield's 
don't know what happened with the camera angle there. A little bit of a glitch in the camera, but it is what it is. We move. Um, I don't think my recording software had a nice time of it. But speaking of that, though, here goes Reese now. He's got the straight line speed here to attack Sam now. Going in towards Cop's corner. Reese around the outside. Sam on the inside line. They just about hold it uh, into towards each other now. As they go into Magnus and Beckett, Reese now takes the lead of the British Grand Prix. Can Sam keep it together through Magnus and Beckett and get a good run on towards the, uh, the Hanging Strait or the Wellington Strait? One of the straights. I don't really know, to be honest. I should just stop naming corners. But unfortunately for Sam, he's not going to, though. He's got the DRS, but Van Dorn has the DRS, and Stoffel now has got its way past Sam. So I wonder if Sam has got some form of a problem that we're not quite aware of here, because he's definitely struggling now. The Mercedes car has got past him. Now Lando Norris is fancying a run here on Sam. I wonder. Sam definitely has a problem in this Grand Prix, because he's just being mugged off now by the field here. Back end sliding a little bit now. Here comes Charles Leclerc for a run on Sam. There's definitely an issue. There's us there in the background. So what I'm hoping for is that these drivers continue to scrap it out, lose loads of time, and we can get ourselves right back in the mix here. Um, but as you can see, though, Charles Leclerc is going to have a run here. But now we've got Lewis Hamilton. I think this is his trying to make it three wide into the first corner. That was never really going to work out. Hamilton backs off and he loses time there. So too does Carlos Sainz, who's just desperately trying to find a way through. But he's got to wait a little bit longer before he's going to get his opportunity as Sam and Leclerc continue to go side by side here. This is costing both of them crucial amounts of time here. But as you can see, it's not going to be Leclerc with the DRS. It's going to be Sam that's going to have it. And he's going to pass his way through uh, Charles Leclerc. And he goes through swooping now in towards Brooklyn and Luffield. And he maintains his position on the track. But that's not going to be for much longer here now. As Charles Leclerc is going to press his way through onto Sam now. As they go onto the straight here and down in towards Stoke Corner. Let's see if Leclerc can get this one done this time around here. But Sam holds it off and nicely gets a very nice exit there. And I'm just wondering, like we've seen before, if he used any of his energy uh, onto that straight. As you can see here, we're now uh, onto lap 10 of the Grand Prix. I wish that was the uh, the cars in front, but that's actually a lapsed driver there uh, that is um, one of the Porsche cars of Hulkenberg. But unfortunately for me, uh, I was going to try and defend against my teammate Gasly, uh, but Gasly unleashed the rocket ship of the Renault, and uh, I had no way of uh, making that move. Uh, uh, stay in my favour. Lots of drivers now coming into the pits here from the front runners. Um, so we're just going to continue on our way though. It's not our time to stop. This lap now it is time and there you can see is the Porsche driver unlapping himself here and one lap later now on lap 11 here we're now going to come into the pits here and get off these soft compound tyres, get onto a set of the mediums and get us to the end of the Grand Prix. One of the Ferraris there just in front but plenty of drivers coming into the pits now. That is myself, Verstappen, Russell. We're pretty much in a little bit of a four-way fight here actually in this race. It's currently Currently, Gasly versus myself versus Verstappen versus Russell. The other drivers in front, unfortunately, we just don't have the pace uh, to keep up with them. They're just too quick for us uh, at the moment. And we're pretty much fighting for P10. There's nothing else that we can fight for. Um, we're, we're trying our hardest. I am genuinely pushing as hard as I possibly can. Uh, and there's nothing I can do about it. So, you know, the AIs, they've got so much pace around here um, that we're just going to have to fight for what we can fight for. And if uh, in the races that we are good at, we can fight for wins, we'll fight for wins in these races where the AIs are really powerful and our lack of downforce is really coming into play, then we'll fight uh, for, well, P10 at the moment. As you can see, though, lap 13 here for Stappen all over the back of us now, but this is the crucial thing here. Have we done enough to make the undercut on Pierre Gasly work? It's going to be close between the two of us here. We'll have the outside line to ourselves, though. Swoop around the outside here, and that is us making the move on Pierre Gasly, and we are up now into 10th place in this Grand Prix. The undercut has worked there as there's a yellow flag in behind now as we open up our DRS here, getting a nice helping hand of that as well uh, to allow us to save some of our battery here. And you can see there are the other drivers ahead, so they're really not that far ahead there as that's not Mazepin. That is uh, Robert Schwartzman. It is out of the Grand Prix. Again, there is still not a names mod out there, and I genuinely don't have the time or the knowledge to know how to make one. So uh, I have to put that in every single video because I keep getting asked about it. But as you can see here, Gasly is definitely now, as he comes out of the pits here, using up his ERS now to kind of have a little run there. Try to go for it in towards Cop's corner, but we just had a little bit too much straight line speed there to allow that to work. If we go through Maggots and Beckett's not getting launched by any of the curves, but we're still getting a really bad run through Beckett's there. Now onto the straight here. This is just going to be an easy pickings uh, for, um, for Pierre Gasly. He makes his way through. He's now up into 10th place in this Grand Prix. We dropped to 11th, and at the moment, we're currently out of the points as we absolutely mess up Stoke Corner there. 
just for good measure now as we go on to lap 12. Forwarding back a little bit here in the Grand Prix because uh, a lap earlier than this, here comes Carlos Sainz. He was trying to make a move here on Lewis Hamilton as Sam there is just in front. Sam, crucially, has gone to the hard compound tyres. So we heard in the practice uh, session or the news feed that a lot of the teams were struggling a lot with the medium compound tyres. Now, most of us are still running it anyway, but Red Bull, it looks like, was struggling so badly, especially with Sam, that they've had to go to the hard tyres then in this Grand Prix. So that's a little bit of an interesting strategy there. And I wonder if drivers are going to start to be able to get the mediums to work in this race, or will Sam be able to come back later on in the Grand Prix? But as you can see here, lap uh, 16 of the Grand Prix, we've just set our personal best of the race so far. 121.9, still miles off what the other drivers are actually able to do here. But we're catching up again to Pierre Gasly. And all I'm trying to do here is just slipstream and DRS with Gasly to try and see if we can catch up to the Ferraris ahead now as we get a lovely onboard uh, helicopter cam here. Now as we go in towards Brooklyn, see a Gasly tries to hold it, but we just about get in front of Gasly. But now in towards Luffield here, Gasly trying to get back past us again here. Gasly not quite understanding the whole DRS slipstream train here, but we get in front of him now and we can press onwards in this Grand Prix as we get a load of an update of the drivers in front trying to watch what their lap times are see if we can keep up with them at the moment we're about two tenths of lap faster than the Ferraris ahead so at this stage of the race we are gaining in on them but if we keep on fighting the way that we are fighting and not doing the slipstream properly and well me doing that corner properly would also help um, then we're not going to get anywhere but there goes Gasly he is through but I've got a problem here and that's Verstappen's got DRS and that's exactly what Max wants to do and I've just seen that at the last moment really cut him off Myself and Gasly boxing Verstappen and we get through and we're absolutely fine and all of that and uh, Verstappen comes into the pits. Like, why, why is Verstappen pitting there? That's that's not what you want to be doing here at Silverstone. You do not want to be making a second pit stop in this uh, Grand Prix and uh, yeah, a shame there for Verstappen but he's in and I'm not quite sure why but lap 17 of the Grand Prix now. We're uh, onto the back of Pierre Gasly and uh, we're going to go for the move this time. As you can see, just doing a bit of slipstreaming and some DRS here to go down the inside. You can see the Ferraris are still quite close ahead but we're just not quite getting there uh, towards them. There they go into the Veil chicane. There they are. That is Sam, uh, both Ferraris and also I believe it's Charles Leclerc that's in the mix there. So they're, they're just up ahead. It's just frustrating because I just don't have that cutting edge to actually get in front of them. And then as you can see here, we're just making these stupid mistakes every single time through Maggots and Beckett's and uh, Chapel. We're just making the same errors constantly, just not able to nail the apexes. And it's all down to the car, really. Um, every single race that I do on the F1 journey, I use the standard setup. I don't make a setup. I don't try and help things here. But what's going to help us is the fact that we've got an issue here for one of the Ferraris. One of them's gone spinning around there. And that's a dramatic problem for them in this Grand Prix. And we were hoping that we could see some battling to close us up. But even that, which is going to help us out. It's Lewis Hamilton here now. They're chasing one of the Mercedeses and he spins the car around there on the exit of the corner there. That's a really bad error for someone of Lewis Hamilton to be making there. But they were all closing up to one of the Mercedes drivers there. So I wonder if one of the Mercs has got a problem here. As we go on to lap 19 here, this is Sam now on board here. And he's going to go and go for it now. And it's Nick De Vries here. So I think De Vries now has got a problem in this Grand Prix. I wonder if he's either A, got a mechanical issue, or B, he's got some front wing damage that we're just not uh, aware of. And uh, unfortunately for De Vries, he's going to miss out here on this position here. But a lot... Oh, here comes Carlos Sainz though. I'm trying to talk about Sam versus De Vries here. This is Carlos Sainz trying to go for a double overtake here. He's caught around the outside of Cobb. And he's got and got past Sam as well. What a move there from Carlos Sainz. He's now up into, I think that is uh, sixth place in this Grand Prix. It's Leclerc and De Vries get a little bit tasty uh, going through Magnus and Beckett's there. But Leclerc gets the position. So too does Sam, so too does Sainz. But does that mean now that De Vries is going to pit? Or do we have to pass him on track here? Speaking of passing on track, that's exactly what Leclerc wants to do on Sam here. You can see now that they're trying to go for it here on the two as they go through in towards Magnus and Beckett. Sam does hold the position, but of course we've now got a DRS straight that is coming up. You can see, look at the run that Sam gets through Beckett's there. That's brilliant from him. He's got so much downforce in the car as Leclerc doesn't get the move stick. Lap 22, that Mercedes I was talking about of De Vries, the back end slides horribly through there. He's actually staying out with whatever problem that they've got and it's just going to be another free position that myself and Gasly can go for here as Gasly goes around the outside there through uh, Cox Corner. Ignore what I was doing there. I was going completely off the circuit. Dirty air there uh, really hurting me, especially when there's two lots of dirty air 
through that, and it's going to make it even worse through Magnus and Beckett's there, but Gasly gets the move done, but uh, De Vries gets a horrible exit, and that's just going to allow us here to get the run here with DRS now, but we're going to get boxed in slightly from Pierre Gasly, I'm aware of that, and I make sure that we try and cover ourselves in two areas here, Gasly though stays in front now, but as you can see, going in towards the Velgeke, we'll send it up the inside, of Pierre Gasly, and we make the move stick now on our teammate here, but he's going to hold it though through the Velgecane and through club corner. We're still side by side then as we go on to the straight, but we just about have enough legs there to get in front and stay in front of Pierre Gasly with just three more laps to go. We are now in eighth place in this Grand Prix, and you can see again, I can still see them. They're just literally going through the straight now, it goes Leclerc and Sam and also uh, Carlos Sainz but we just don't have enough. And it's really, really annoying as we now go on to the straight here. And this is uh, Charles Leclerc now trying to make a run here on Sam down the inside of Cops. It's going to be very close between the pair of them now, but they just about make it through unscathed as they now go through Magnus and Beckett. This is where one driver is going to have to show a little bit more balls than the other one as they go through now in towards the complex of corners. Both of them are not going to lift here. They're both going to have an absolutely ding-dong beautiful battle, but it's going to be who's got the straight line speed. Charles Leclerc's got the straight line speed. Sam drops down into a uh, seventh place in this Grand Prix and I know that because I'm in eighth and Sam is the rider directly in front of me now lap 24 of the Grand Prix here here comes uh, Pierre Gasly now in the Renault once again trying to make the move stick on me we're going to have to defend this one here Gasly goes to the outside line though we're going to defend the inside of Stoke Corner but Gasly tries to swoop it around the outside line but we cover him off and that's allowed George Russell to get into the fray here and I honestly didn't realize that George Russell was there if Russell I knew was there I would have had to have changed my defensive approach on Pierre Gasly now my trust is that Gasly can get past George Russell Russell here and uh, amends for me being a little bit of a naughty teammate there and uh, allowing uh, that sort of defensive driving but here comes uh, the uh, Renault once again now trying to go down the inside here let's see if he can try and make it uh, stick on George Russell Russell though hanging on in there just as much as he possibly can in that Audi of course Russell really has been struggling this season uh, to match his teammate in the Audi but as you can see it's a lovely move here but lap 25 of the Grand Prix the battle for the race lead here Stoff Van Dorn is leading this Grand Prix Reese has been chasing him down in second place all race long really well Reese was in the lead so Van Thorn somewhere managed to get the lead but Reese now is going to try and take it back with a lap and a half to go through Maggots and Beckett Reese retakes the lead of the British Grand Prix and Zoffer Van Dorn now has got to get his ideas together because he now needs to try and find a way to get back into the mix here as we go on to the last lap here of the British Grand Prix and for us now we're in 8th place and we're on maximum defence here as we get onto the gravel just a little bit there and that's going to be very inviting for Pierre Gasly who's going to go for it now we've been saving up our battery last lap of the race Gasly does not want me to have 8th place in this Grand Prix he wants it and through uh, Cops Corner we go side by side now Russell trying to get involved in the act as well through Magnus and Beckett contact made between myself and Gasly for the second race in a row contact is made but Gasly gets in front there Reese then sets the fastest lap and wins the British Grand Prix, but we've got DRS down here. First is Gasly, but here comes uh, George Russell trying to get involved. Russell gets past Pierre Gasly as well into Stone Corner for the last time here. Back end sliding a little bit, not much downfall. There comes Russell. Russell's going to steal this one as we go into the Vale Chicane, breaking super late now as we try and make our way through. We get in front of Russell and round to the line. It's eighth place for the British Grand Prix, and it was a dramatic finish right at the end. And there was no arguing there. That was a hard fought Grand Prix overall but as you can see then it was Reese that came across the line to win the British Grand Prix and in fairness to Reese, it's a British Grand Prix win that is well overdue for him he has been so unfortunate on many occasions there was one event when Reese was way out front uh, in the Grand Prix and his engine failed very close to the end actually uh, and also last season as well when we were driving for Ferrari of course it was an epic battle between myself and Reese all race long uh, and then as we fought uh, I believe Charles Leclerc came along and actually stole the win away from the both of us in that event so this time around Reese snatched the win from Stoffer Van Dorn by seven tenths of a second Lando Norris getting himself on the podium for his home Grand Prix for Jaguar and his hot runner form continues Sergio Perez once again impresses for Mercedes and he gets himself a P4 in the end there with Charles Leclerc securing 5th place for Audi. Carlos Sainz crosses the line to finish in 6th place, 14 seconds off the pace with Sam finishing the race in 7th, 15 seconds off the pace and starting from pole position it really didn't transpire well for Sam in this race. We come across the line to finish in 8th place 
we, we had a decent Grand Prix. We were actually more competitive than I thought that we were, but unfortunately, the race really transpired when we failed to get past Daniel Ricciardo on lap three when he had a mechanical problem. If I was able to do that, I think I probably could have done everything in my power to stay in DRS of the guys in front. And you never know, with them then battling, we may have actually got closer to them, but unfortunately, uh, I got dragged into the battle with Pierre Gasly. But in fairness, the guys behind me, Gasly, Russell, etc., were also faster than me, so a bit of a hot and hot and a rock and a hard place in that one. Russell finishes in uh, P9, and then Gasly crosses in the line in P10. Reese, as well, to cement his victory, gets the fastest lap with a 120.6 on the dot, which makes me very satisfied. I love when I see a timing screen on the dot. Looking at the second half of the table now, Nick DeVries crosses the line in P11 for Mercedes. He had a little bit of a problem uh, with his uh, race and that cost him time and he finishes in 11th. Callum Eilat with a very strong showing for in his home Grand Prix for Ford, beating Mick Schumacher uh, across the line. Bottas in 14th place for Porsche with Daniel Ricciardo in 15th for the second McLaren. Again, he had mechanical problems and just couldn't recover from that. Oscar Piastri finishes in 16th for Aston Martin with Lewis Hamilton down in P17 after his spin and his problems in his Grand Prix. Verstappen in 18th place, of course. He made that second pit stop. Not sure why. Um, I don't even remember making any contact with him when we went side by side uh, when we were fighting Gasly uh, but he finishes in 18th place Hulkenberg finishes in 19th for Porsche and then Robert Schwartzman for a second weekend in a row DNS for Aston Martin not good for him uh, as he tries to build any form of momentum in an Aston Martin car that is just struggling Let's go and have a look at the Drivers' Championship then and see how things are lining up then. And as you can see, the Drivers' Championship is starting to get a lot closer now than what it was previously. We are on 157 points. We are now just 12 points clear of Charles Leclerc at the top of the Championship, of course, with us finishing in 8th and Leclerc finishing in 5th. Of course, Charles, his Audi is definitely taking a back, uh, back step uh, from where it was at the start of the season, but he's now starting to regain on us in the Championship and he is just 12 points behind. Reese with that that victory and fastest lap as well is now 30 points shy of us in the championship and you may be thinking 30 points that's a lot but there is still plenty of races to go and that McLaren is fast. Lando Norris as well is another man to keep an eye on in this championship. He's on 114 points. He now goes in front of Sam in the championship. He's on 107 points. The top five are separated by just 50 points. And that's, again, I can say, it, you know, it's two race wins in a row, but all it can take is DNFs in any of these races to cost any of us points. Lewis Hamilton is sixth in the championship on 94 points. He remains on that points tally. Stoffel van Dorn has put himself right up in the championship order with that podium. He's now up to seventh when he was outside of the top 10. Uh, he is on 61 points uh, in the end there with Pierre Gasly uh, on uh, 54 points, eighth place uh, in the championship. And then Daniel Ricciardo and Carlos Sainz putting themselves tight on points, ninth and tenth in the championship. The next event is the Austrian Grand Prix. As we look then at the Constructors Championship now, it, Renault, we are still leading the way with 211 points. I believe we are 21 points clear of Audi at the top of the championship. They're on 190 points. McLaren gained some crucial points in the Constructors Championship on 176 points with Red Bull on 168. Adidas Jaguar on 155 points with Ferrari 143 points. Mercedes continuing to just build up the points. Seventh in the championship and pretty much cementing that. 53 points then a Ford still have 21 points. Aston Martin crucially still have that one point advantage over Porsche which could be crucial in the championship standings. But with that being said and done, let's get straight into the post-race notebook and see how the teams and drivers fared after the British Grand Prix. Taking a look at the post-race notebook, Reese managed to snatch victory away from Stoffel van Dorn on lap 25 of the British Grand Prix to claim his first win here at Silverstone. Van Dorn has to settle for P2 after coming so close to his first win for Red Bull and Landon Norris managed to fight his way back up uh, into the podium into P3 as his run of form continues. Someone's run of form that is not going to plan at the moment is Tom in the Renault and he has warned Renault that he needs upgrades on this car if he's going to win the title. It's a title race gets hotter with the championship rivals continuously closing down on the man out front. Lewis Hamilton is also a man that's unhappy with his car. He believes the Ferrari car has just continued to go backwards as the season's gone on. Lewis Hamilton started the season in fine style with pole position and victory, but from then on in, it's been a very, very difficult season. And overall for Ferrari, it's been a tough one with only three podiums secured for them. 
and Reese was left lost for words after his first home Grand Prix victory. Reese has had two occasions where he's been so close to victory at the British Grand Prix, only for some circumstances to snatch it away, one of them being an engine failure and one of them being a hard fought battle with Tom, which was spoiled with Charles Leclerc coming in the mix and taking the race win away from him on the final corner of the final lap of the Grand Prix. This time around though, Rhys was able to snatch the win away from Van Dorn on lap 25, hold on and take a well-deserved win. But next time around, we're off to the Styrian Hills for the Austrian Grand Prix. Are the rivals going to continue to chomp at the heels of Tom, or will Tom be able to find some momentum and build up a crucial lead in the championship as it gets even closer at the top? But for now, I'm out. Take care all. Peace.